Stephen, congratulations. You've battled your way through this Middle Ages themed challenge to arrive here at the third level of this competition, where you'll go up against one of our expert judges for the opportunity to win $10,000. Are you ready to see which judge you'll be facing in this competition? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. All right, that judge is. David Baker. Oh, my God. Hey, Steve. Hey, Mr. Baker. Good to see you, man. Dave Baker, I think he's really good at making just about anything. No, it's not going to be easy, but I'm ready. I know I've got a good challenger here. Steve made that Nambi Nulu that, that was exquisite. I mean, it was a beautiful piece. I'm going against a smith who can knock it out of the park. All right, gents. Now, in this final level, of the Beat the Judges competition, you guys will be forging one of these. A medieval arming sword. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good luck, Bladesmiths. Your eight hours starts now. I have eight hours to make the best weapon I can, period. I want steel that is durable, flexible, holds an edge. That's 1095. Of the mono steels out there, that's the one I would pick. It's got the best balance of edge retention and toughness. I'm going to go with the W1. I know I can take that piece of round bar and make it whatever I want to without a whole lot of fight. I got to get a chunk of this W1 off because I have no interest in carrying around this giant piece of steel. The ridiculous part is this is a sword that we've seen made in four or five days at their home forges. Here in this arena, they have to do it in eight hours. Eight hours may sound like a lot of time. It is not. If I get off track, the whole thing could spiral into a downward burning zeppelin of doom. <laughs> I don't have the blade as wide as I'd like it to be, so I transition over to the press. I push in my basic fuller, and that actually pushes that steel out almost a quarter inch. It's looking good. Based on the timeline I'm imagining, I'm feeling pretty good about the way I'm moving the steel. But as I'm drawing out this material, things start to banana peel on me and get off center. In order to correct that, I whack it on whatever's close by to keep it straight, because it's going to be a lot easier to draw this out if I have a, a fairly straight piece of material to work with. Eek. This is a stressful competition, and if you get to smack stuff, I mean, it's pretty nice, you know? It feels good. It's great. Just do it. Dave's got his fuller set. Hopefully, he's going to start heating up for his clinch. Heating the blade this size in a forge that's half the length of the blade can be tricky. You've got a very wide section at the back, and you've got a thin section at the front. So, of course, this is going to heat up faster in the back. The trick is to let the thick part heat up to where you're close, and then start moving things. And that heat will travel down and equalize. Dave's in the quench. I've got a nice straight blade. I'm like, yeah, beautiful. Bladesmiths, half the time has elapsed in this competition. You have just four hours remaining. We have a weight parameter. And if I don't pay attention to the weight the whole way, I'm going to bust parameters. Steven's got his blade on the scale, and it's just over three pounds. How is he going to make this thing hit the weight parameter? Well, he's going to either have to start regrinding on that blade. Or fullering, and lots of it. That's the purpose of fullering it. But right now, my blade's pretty heavy because it's still got all the meat attached, and the bevels aren't ground. But the more I grind, the more weight's going to peel right off. Dave's at the tempering oven now. What tempering does is relax all that tension that's in the blade, creating a blade that should be tough, flexible, able to hold an edge. That way it should hold up in our tests beautifully. Steven is in the quench. Flaming sword! Oh, my god! Ah! I have a fiery sword of glory, and I'm trying to get this sucker over to my jig to keep it from picking up too big of a warp. I just hope I got it in there quickly enough for it to actually help keep the blade straight. I get my sword out of the tempering oven. Looks good. So it's time to lose some of this weight. I can't just make a blade that looks good and feels good. It's got to fall under that three pound limit. But I'm fighting for ounces. Is Dave making that fuller wider? That's not a bad idea. I mean, that'll take some more weight off. Add maybe an eighth of an inch at the base of the fuller's tapering along the blade. 
I'm getting there. <laughs> so it looks like the jig didn't work. Steven's about to temper his blade, and it's got a pretty good curvature to it. I can't leave the warp in it. I got to do something about it. It looks like Steven's doing that pin technique to take the warp out. But instead of a third pin, he's just using the clamp on the top. Yeah. All he's got to do is put a little too much pressure on it and then pull up two daggers. Hopefully, in the temper, it will correct and relax back straight. I take my blade out of the temper, and the warp is gone. So far, so good. Yeah. I get all my parts on the scale. Yes! It's right where I wanted to be. So it's back to the grinder for sharpening. I'm ahead of my game now. 30 minutes, Blade Smiths. I don't know when it happened or, or where it went, but at some point in time, it magically disappeared. Dave is about done, except for a little bit of fitting up to the tank he's going to make. I think he's in a great spot. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I take the pieces of my guard, and I try to epoxy as quickly as I can. 10 minutes, Bladesmiths. Just 10 minutes remaining. I have no time on the clock left, and I have to hurry. Five, four, three, two, one. Bladesmiths, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This level of competition is over. I've done everything I can, and I fought as hard as I could, and I left everything out there on the forge floor. I'm a little worried about my weight. Hopefully, I don't get dinged on busted parameters. Placements, welcome to the keel test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your arming swords will do according to its historic design, I will take your weapon, deliver some lethal slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. But first, your blades have to meet our parameters. So this is one of our longer blades of at least 27 to 29 inches and that special weight parameter of three pounds or less. I'm gonna have Jay and Ben make sure it does pass. Dave, you're up first. All right, Dave, let's talk about your arming sword here. The handle construction is comfortable. My hand fits perfectly right on the guard and the pommel. Your edges are very sharp. It cuts very deep into the big carcass. Overall, sir, this sword is light, fast, sharp, and it will kill. Thanks, Doug. Steven, next up, we gotta make sure your blade passes the parameters. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I'm worried about my weight. I didn't really have time to weight check. I don't know what it weighs. No, I'm just praying that my blade is under three pounds. That is right at three. No, no, you. <laughs> it is exactly three pounds. <laughs> Riddle me this, I don't know how. My sword is exactly three pounds, so we might see a hunk of junk slice through some pig today. I don't know. Oh, that's not good. Uh oh. 26 and 5 eighths. <gasps> supposed to be 27, oh, 29. Man. Well. Steven. The judges have measured your blade, and you missed the length parameter on the blade by 3 eighths of an inch. Because you missed that parameter, you just can't win this competition. Yes, sir, I understand. Dave, congratulations. You're getting the $10,000 from this one. What is your charity? The Breast Cancer Research Fund. All right, well, that's fantastic charity. Steven, I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, but then I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I didn't make my blade long enough, and I don't know if somewhere along the way I got the numbers mixed up or if I took off too much at some point. <laughs> Dave's sword, well, he knocked it out of the park, man. His is super beautiful, and mine looks like it fell off the back of a ugly truck, skipped down the ugly street, and landed on ugly lane. But truthfully, I'm just happy that I was able to turn something in. I'm not happy it was under the length parameter. 
Eight hours is an insane time crunch. Uh, it was very difficult, but it was the good kind of hard, and I would totally do it again. This uh, whole experience has been great. To be able to get down on the floor and start scrapping is a rare opportunity. I just want to remind any Smith who's coming that this is my house. This is where I work. So bring it. Ha, ha, ha.